G'day folks, today I've driven 165 kilometres to see if I can catch a carp. Hey, and you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now that may sound a little bit crazy to some of you people. Why would he drive 165 kilometres to catch a carp? I'll explain shortly. But for now, this is the Yanko Creek. Yanko Creek is fed by waters of the Murrumbidgee River in New South Wales. It then flows down through the Riverina to the township of Marunda, which is downstream of where I am. It then splits into two. It stays the Yanko Creek and the Colombo Creek. And they both go way downstream further to join up with the Billabong Creek, which flows right down past Canago and for miles and miles and miles. So um, it's Murrumbidgee River water in the, in the Yanko Creek, which feeds the Billabong Creek. I'm out in the middle of the New South Wales Riverina. I haven't just come out here to go carp fishing though, and as drastic as that sounds, as you all know, I love photography, and I've been out here doing a bit of wildlife photography and landscape photography. I just love this part of the world. It's one of my favorite parts of the world. And as always, I've got my fishing rods in the car and some Janjak worms, and I thought if I see anywhere that catches my eye, I'll throw a line in for a while. I might only sit here for an hour, or I might stay here for the rest of the day, who knows? But for now I'm going to sit in the sun, or the shade, because the sun's gone beyond a cloud Throw a couple of lines in, some worms on it, and see if there's any fish here well, I don't know too much about this waterway I've caught carp downstream in both the Yango and the Yanko and the Colombo, mostly the Colombo Creek But as with most of this type of fishing, I've got two rods with Pat Nosterigs and a couple of Janjak worms on each rod Now this one's got the lighter sinker, so I'm putting it on the downstream side because I won't mind if the current just washes that sink around against this bit of a backwater here, right up close against the bank. And my other rod here, this has got the slightly heavier sinker. He can go on the upstream side, and he can just go out in front of me. Seems to be a reasonable depth there. There's no point casting way out there because the current is really strong. There's quite a lot of water moving through here. But it seemed to be in a good four or five feet of water. Now both rods are in, nice and tight against the bank because there is a lot of current. I just went and washed my hands down there to wash the worms, the uh, dirt and stuff off my hands and I found a carp scale. No surprises there, there's carp here. Anyway, I don't know how long I'm going to stay here this afternoon, it depends how well the fish are biting. I'll give it, I reckon it's 2.30 now, I'll give it until at least 4 o'clock. I'll persevere for an hour and a half and if I haven't had any bites by 4 o'clock, then I'll, uh, I'll make a decision then. Just had a bit of a nibble on this rod here, I'm sure I did. I was replying to a text message and I looked up and I'm sure I saw it just moving around a bit when I looked up then. I just went to grab myself a salad sandwich out of my car and it starts raining. Hopefully it's just a passing shower and doesn't hang around too long. Last time I used this umbrella I was fishing over on the Goulburn River with Rowan. It was 40 degrees and I was using it for shade. This time I'm using it to keep myself dry. <laughs> this is actually really cool. I'm getting a nibble on this rod right now while it's raining. Can you believe it? Step out from under my umbrella and have a look. I'm still playing with it. I missed it. Could have been the current just moving the sinker too. It wasn't a fast stabbing kind of a bite, it was a slow. Unless it was a crayfish or something playing with it. I don't know whether they're here or not. Look at the big long pull. Whether it's the current or there's a crayfish on here. I reckon there's a crayfish on here, you know. I reckon I've got a bloody crayfish on here. It certainly feels like I have two. Oh, there you go, folks. Certainly feels like I have two. Oh, there you go, folks. I know there's one thing here crayfish. It's only a little weenie cray, but I almost caught a crayfish. The same sort of bite that I had when I was, when it was raining a bit harder. It was just a slow pull, just like a crayfish. As far as I'm aware, Crayfishing isn't actually allowed in this particular waterway. New South Wales has even more harsh uh, restrictions on Murray crayfishing than what Victoria does. There's only a couple of spots where you can go, and this isn't one of them. Right, my uh, having my salad roll for lunch, but I just realised it's got beetroot in it. I'm not a big fan of beetroot. Don't like it at all. You know what they say that you know the difference between an egg and a beetroot. Well, you can beat an egg, but you can't beat a. That was a bite. Definite fish bite. That one.
Or is there another crayfish playing with that? There you go, folks. Have a look at that. Oh, you wouldn't read about it in the middle of winter. <laughs> In the middle of winter, I've caught a bloody yabby on my fishing rod. A yabby. I put a crayfish up earlier. This time a yabby. You would not read about it. If I wasn't filming this, I can just about guarantee no one would believe me. Dad, if you're watching, we spent hours trying to catch yabbies to take to Lake Buffalo a few weeks ago. And we a lot of hard work for a few yabbies. Maybe I should have just got my fishing rod and gone and caught some. Middle of winter middle of the salad roll and i've got a yabby unbelievable <laughs> i kid you not i'm getting a bite again i look i'm still eating that same salad roll with a beetroot in it i'm gonna get me scoop net if it's a crayfish i'll see if i can land it i don't like my chances but you never know there's something on here there's a crayon here i reckon not a corolla crayon but a crayfish on my line this is just insane. I don't hope I've got enough line there. Can I scoop it? Can I scoop it? Can I scoop it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Can you believe this? I've come here to a new spot to go fishing for fish to try and catch a carp. And I've lost one crayfish. Caught a yabby. That is just, I, you wouldn't read about that shit. You wouldn't read about that. He's tangled in the line here. Hang on, mate. Hang on, mate. And look at that. Now a spiny Murray crayfish. You know, it's a, it's a protected waterway here. I'm almost certain that you're not allowed to catch them out of here. Look at that. I'm a bit of a crayfish magnet at the moment. A bit of a crustacean magnet at the moment. Are there any fish in here or just shellfish? See you later, mate. Tell your story walking. Unbelievable! My dietitian Dan Thompson tells me to eat slowly. I'm certainly doing that today. I'm bloody struggling to get through my salad roll. He also tells me to eat three meals a day and I'm pretty sure none of those meals are three o'clock in the afternoon. Here we go. The rod is bending. I reckon there's another crayfish on here. I didn't come here today to catch crayfish, I promise. <laughs> there's something on here. So that another yabby or a really small cray. I'll see if I can lift it out. Where is it? Can't see it yet. I reckon it's a little cray. Here he is. Tiny little crayfish. Look, I got him. I got him. Look. Look how small he is. That is a tiny, weeny, weeny, incy wincy crayfish. Ow. I tell ow. I tell you why I said ow. I've got a sore on my thumb. And one of them little spikes went straight into that saw. Look at the size of that incy wincy little cray. I didn't get a photo of that. That is tiny. That's probably got a three and a half centimetre carapace length, I reckon. Little baby cray. See you later, alligator. Well, this fishing spot has turned out totally not as I expected. To be honest, I thought I'll catch nothing here. It's the middle of winter, has a cold southerly wind, conditions are uh, far from ideal. I thought I'll catch nothing, and if I do catch something, it'll be a carp. But I've caught two and lost one crayfish, and then absolutely unheard of, I caught a yabby. I would have been, uh, I would have expected to catch a stingray in here before I caught a yabby in the middle of winter.
came here hoping to catch a carp or some kind of a finned fish. I wasn't planning on catching crayfish and I certainly was not expecting to catch a yabby. But anyway, I've decided to jump on and have a, a look at the crayfishing rules for New South Wales. This is as, as of the 26th of June 2021. These rules can change, so make sure you look at the rules before you go crayfishing. But as of right now, the size limit in New South Wales is 10 centimetres to 12 centimetres, which is the same as Victoria. You can have two per day, you're allowed two per day, or four in possession, which is the same as Victoria. But this is where it gets confusing. June to August is the opening season, same as Victoria, June to August, in the following waters. The Murrumbid Murrumbidgee River and its tributaries, excluding Old Man Creek, from the Hume Highway Road at Gundagai to a line 100 metres upstream of the weir at Berenbed Weir near Garmain. So I've just jumped on and had a look at where that is and Berenbed Weir is actually upstream of where this runs off. This runs off downstream of Narandra. It runs off the Murrumbidgee downstream of Narandra. Berenbed Weir is upstream. So even where this runs off the river is you're not allowed to crayfish. So this is definitely closed. Secondly, it's not a tributary of the Murrumbidgee anyway. It runs off the Bidgee, but it runs on to the Edwards River down at Moolamine. So it's definitely closed. But according to this, there's only really a couple of places in New South Wales where you can crayfish. A section of the Murray River between Aubrey and Tokemal, and a section of the, uh, of the Murrumbidgee River between Gundagai and just downstream near Berenbed Weir. I'm not familiar with those places, but other than that, the rest of the state crayfish, including this spot, crayfish are off limits. Just about to pull this up and put a new worm on it. Look at it dancing around. It's almost like a fish bite, that one. It is a fish bite. I've got a fish fish instead of a bloody crayfish. I knew there'd be carp here. Look at it. I knew it. I knew it. I just checked that one. I thought, nah, those worms have hardly been touched. I thought, I, I just got my worm bucket here. I'm about to put some fresh worms on. And I thought, that's getting a bite, and I thought, that looks a bit more like a fish bite than a crayfish bite. Well, I reckon I might be about to help the, uh, these small crayfish grow into big crayfish, because if I kill, if I, if I manage to land this, which I don't see why I won't now, I'll kill it, I'll cut some slits in it, and I'll throw it back and let it sink, and then those crayfish will be able to fatten up a little bit. And they had to be here. Well, I saw the scale. There we go, folks. I'll get a, uh, if I've got a tape measure, I'll get a measure. If I haven't, I'll just have a guess, but I reckon it's probably around about the 55 centimeter mark. Ugh. Right, he is, I said 55. He's right on. Just to tell you what, the old eyeometer, He's calibrated perfectly. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill him, then I'm going to cut some slits through him so that he sinks to the bottom and fattens up them crayfish. Right now a couple of fresh Janjuk worms on here. That's the first time I've put fresh bait on this line. All those crayfish on that yabby came from the same set of worms and the carp. Look at those real little nibbles on here. They're almost like shrimp bites. See that? If I didn't know any better, I'd think that was a shrimp. What a bite, look at that. There's something really small on here. Let's see if I can lift it out of the water before it gets off. Don't get off, don't get off, don't get off, and... Oh, well, you wouldn't read about it. Look at this, look, 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 look. It's the middle of winter. It's the mi- ow! It's the middle of winter. It is the 26th of June. I've caught three or four crayfish, which is expected this time of year. I just didn't know they were here. One carp, which is kind of expected this time of year. One shrimp and one yabby. A freshwater shrimp. Y y I couldn't have made, I couldn't make this up. I could not make this stuff up. I'm not joking. <laughs> Look at that. The best yellow belly and red ow! Best yellow belly and red fin bait there is. And they hurt a little bit too apparently. See you later mate, hide me above the water and you let go. Uh mate. Come on now. Come on. Off you go. Ow! Don't just dig in. 
every I'm wiggling my thumb so he lets go. Every time I <laughs> If I was going to write a, a, a book, a non-fiction book, I couldn't make this up. 26th of June, the middle of winter, and I'm catching yabbies and shrimp on my fishing rod. <laughs> this is just weird. <laughs> totally, totally, totally the last thing I expected to catch. Well, folks, I'm about to pack up now. I've had a fantastic afternoon. I couldn't have written this. I couldn't have made it up. Catching a yabby on a fishing rod in the middle of June and a shrimp. A few crayfish I'd expect this time of year, although I wasn't expecting to catch any here, and the carp is the only thing I was expecting to catch. This, this session has not panned out the way I thought it would, but I've had so much fun, and what an adventure it's been. But the real adventure is now to come. I've got a two and a half hour drive home. It's not normally that long, but there are so many wild emus and kangaroos on the road. I'm gonna to have to take it nice and easy, at least till I get all the way back down near Corowa. Righto, folks, thanks very much for watching this fishing adventure. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have one, I give it a big fat thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you get a notification each time I upload. Then hopefully I'll see you in my next video.